Tequila Mockingbird. Tequila Mockingbird. Let's start analyzing. Tequila Mockingbird. Let's start analyzing. I'm looking at your Theo lit. Look at your Theo lit. What's up, Theo lit? Welcome to another episode of my To Kill a Mockingbird analysis. Hello, I am Luke. And here are our thought provoking questions for chapter four. Number one, how are chapter one and chapter four of To Kill a Mockingbird similar and different? Number two, how does fear play a role in advancing the plot forward in this chapter? And number three, this is a moral question. So type your answer in the comments below. Do you believe that Jem's treatment of Scout in this chapter is justified? If so, explain why you believe this. And if not, then explain how Jem should treat Scout differently. Now, the main tagline for this chapter of To Kill a Mockingbird is, no summer will ever be like it was before. The new characters that are introduced are Cecile Jacobs and Mrs. DuBose. Cecile Jacobs is there kind of to advance the plot forward by showing fear. This is about ch- basically number question two. Now, Cecile Jacobs, he is very scared of a lot of things, particularly this neighborhood. Uh, specifically, he's scared of the Radley House and Mrs. DuBose. But particularly what this is supposed to indicate is how Maycomb County, there is a lot of fear because there are a lot of people who we don't like, who we want to avoid. And this kind of idea of fear is instilled in every kid in Maycomb County, as we will see with how Scout talks about uh, the Radley House in this chapter. The second character is Mrs. DuBose. Mrs. DuBose is kind of this character, uh, an old lady who people are scared of. Uh, I think it's because the way she treats children. So it's very similar, in fact, to Mr. Radley because, you know, no one really knows what Mr. Radley does. She's unemployed. Well, Mrs. DuBose... We, for her, it's just she's a she's a bit like an old lady, and we're kind of scared of her uh, because of the way that she talks and the way that and the things that she does. So this is all about like this gossip in the neighborhood, neighborhood gossip, which just really comes down to having this small town setting that isn't to kill a mockingbird. Now the returning character from before here is Dill, and the main idea here is that Scout really, really wants to leave school. You see, she hates school because school has this conform conformity standards. Uh, they standardize everything, like the Dewey Decimal System. That's what she compares it to. And the thing is, she doesn't like it because she's considered – she thinks that she's a lot better than a lot of these uh, people. But since the school system forces everyone to be at – each of these like low standards, she is slowly treading up the treadmill for uh, May- the Maycomb County school system, which really angers her because she wants to excel, but Maycomb County as a school is restraining her. And once again, this is kind of part of that new education, how education before used to be considered old fashioned, traditional, they knew what they were doing. But now what it is, it's kind of just teaching you to be a factory worker. And it's not really going to help you with knowledge and how you are going to uh, change the world overall. Uh, So in this in this chapter, we really begin with two mysteries. And the first is that Scout finds 
some tin foil in a tree. Well, this tin foil is not any ordinary tin foil. It is Wrigley's bubble gum. And so she takes out this Wrigley bubble gum. She starts chewing it. And then you get this guy. You have Jem, right? And Jem's like, why are you chewing this? You just found this on the ground. And she's like, oh, I didn't find this on the ground, Jem. I found this in the tree. I swear to you. And so they later find some more gum. Jem's a little bit confused. He's like, why is there gum? And that's the first mystery. The second mystery, though, is that they find this wedding ring case. And when they open that wedding ring case, they see these, quote, quote unquote, Indian head pennies. Uh, what they are basically are pennies from the 1900s, from the year 1908, uh, 96, 1906, and 1900. And basically, because these pennies are very old, they have a lot of significance at that time, right? They're around 50 years old, and they're also Indian heads. So they're not ordinary pennies, but also they're very polished. And as Jem posits, they are to ensure good luck and um, good health for the person who has these pennies. So he's like, okay, we can't touch these pennies. This money is very important for that other person. They deserve to get it. Because he, the thing about this in the neighborhood is people do believe in the idea of finders keepers, but finders keepers does not necessarily work with money, which is why they want to find out whose money this is and get them back, get it back to them. But really, the thing is, this is all next to the Radley house, which just erases one suspicion. Is this all belonging to Boo Radley? And after all, if people touch the stuff of the people of the Radleys, the question is, what will the Radleys do to them? So this is that idea of fear that is happening because it is near the, the Radley house and so many suspicious things are going on. It overall leads to many unanswered questions. And moreover, there is a lot of foreshadowing that something will happen based on what the Radleys do. Because remember, Scout does a flashback in chapter one saying it all started with Boo Radley. It all started with Dill, which then ended up starting with Boo Radley. And we have to ask ourselves, well, is it because they stole their possessions? Or not just stole their possessions, but took their possessions. Anyways, those are the big mysteries that come in. Then school is finally over. Uh, so Scout feels like she's been liberated from school. School was horrible, and now she's finally free. And now that she's free, she's basically on this kind of vacation. And so Dill comes along, and she's like, this is going to be like it was before. You see, in Chapter 1, we had the ideal summer. Everything was good. Everything was going according to plan. And the reason why I said this is because in chapter one, they were doing these different plays, right? They were doing really fun plays. Everyone had a great time. They were playing plays like Tarzan, uh, other plays as well. I think there was Tom Swift as well. But really, they all enjoy themselves. And so Scout believes that it'll be like that again this summer. But as I said at the very beginning, no summer will be ever like it was before. This is specifically addressing the first question. How are chapter one and chapter four similar and different? Well, they're similar because they're talking about the summertime and their playtime with Dill, but they're different because chapter one was a more utopian and good summer for Scout, but chapter four, she feels left out. In fact, we see more of how she feels left out when when Scout uh, is in this whole play. You see, before, they used to do fun plays like Tarzan, but now what they try to do is they try to use fear. They try to be, they try to make things scary. And the reason why they do this is really because they want to quote unquote, like test their boldness and see how cool they are, the boys. So they do a play about Boo Radley. And the thing about this is the scout does not want to do this. She's very reluctant to accept it. But not only that, the, the character roles that she gets are very underrepresented and very unimportant. So she gets the character role of Mrs. Radley, and all she really does is just mop the floor and not really do anything. So here's the thing about that. Number one, we're doing a play that scout doesn't like uh, because – 
you know, Scout wants to do some fun things. and But this Boo Radley thing, this makes her nervous because she's a little bit scared about the whole Radley incident. She doesn't know what the Radleys could do. After all, they are right next to the Radley house. And then number two, uh, the reason why I, she probably doesn't like this as much is that her parts are very underrepresented and underimportant. And therefore, she feels like she's being left out and excluded. Or perhaps it never says this, but we do kind of see that feeling of how Scout does not really seem to belong in this group. Before, it wasn't really like shown, but now it's really being highlighted how Scout is one person and Gem and Dill are together as two. So one thing about this chapter is that Jeb does bully Scout, and that is a huge problem. You see, there's two things that Jeb does. First, Jeb calls Scout a little girl. So he uses this idea of a little girl stereotype by saying, okay, girls are really annoying, and we don't want to play with you if you're being a little girl. This is kind of that gender stereotype that was very particular during this time, and it was used very much during this time to kind of indicate women are inferior to men. It's kind of that idea that was circulating in the 1950s which honestly was like being tested and tried during that time period. Later in the 1960s, men and women would be considered more equal to each other and this stereotype would kind of dissolve and become less and less uh, popular. But basically, this is spur of the moment. It's right in that time period. And not only that, but also in order to bully, uh, in order to bully Scout, what Jem does is that he kind of pokes fun at her fear, or it's not necessarily that he's bullying her, but this is a threat of being bullied, is that he knows that Scout is afraid of the Radley house. But the problem is, if Scout says, She's afraid of the Radley house, and that's why they shouldn't be doing the play booed Radley that they've made up. What Jem's going to say is he's going to bully her, or at least this is what she believes. He's going to say, oh, that means that you believe in hot streams. And because you believe in hot streams, you are completely ridiculous. Hot streams are very stupid. After all, if you're, if you're scared of these things and you're such a coward, you must believe in this hot stream idea. And basically the idea of hot streams is, is this. So when someone dies, you're walking down the road. Basically, they're a ghost that walks down empty paths. And if you ever collide with this empty ghost, then when you die, you'll become an empty ghost like them as well. And this kind of idea, people who believe in it are very cowardly because the reason why is that they're easily scared, that they believe that ghosts are real and they're not uh, bold enough to face the fact and say, you know what? I don't care about the scary stuff. I will be better. I will be a quote unquote man about it. And so, yeah, he bullies her there and he also has a threat to bully her, ultimately making Scout feel like she's in a really bad position. So the main thing that I want you to consider when you're really looking at chapter four is how Scout used to feel like she was part of the group and now she no longer does for two reasons, mostly because Jem no longer likes her as much. He's beginning to bully her and, and Scout's starting to realize that. But second of all is that Scout really does not fit in with the group. The group is all about taking dares, right? Touching the Radley house, doing whatever. But meanwhile, Scout is a little bit more cautious. In fact, Scout ends the game not because, number one, her father, Atticus Finch, told her to do it, so he, she respects authority figures a little bit more than them. But the second thing is that she heard someone in the Boo Radley house laughing. You see, back in chapter one, she heard a sudden movement in the house. So someone might have been alive. And now she hears laughing. What does this indicate? My friends, it indicates that Boo Radley is very much alive. And oh boy, he can do some bad stuff to these people. 
Anyways, with that fear and anticipation rolling down your shoulders, thanks for reading, Felix.